Okay guys, so welcome back again. So in this video, let's see that how do we scale our Node.js applications. So for those of you who don't know that Node.js processes are single threaded, that is whenever you start your application, it runs on a single thread that is inside a single process. And if you have a multi-core CPU, then it won't be utilizing the full power of that CPU. It would only be using the single core of that CPU. So to scale our application, we would be using the cluster module. And even if you don't have multi-core CPU, if you only have a single core CPU, then also I would suggest you to start your applications using the cluster module because it would provide you with zero downtime. That is if in any case, any of your instances go down, then the second instance would be up there running. So before diving into the code, let's see the results first. So here at the top, we have the results for multiple instances of our application. And here at the bottom, we have the results for single instance. So the target URL is the same URL here, that is localhost port 3000. And then the number of requests is 1000 requests with a concurrency level of 100. And we see that the total time taken to complete the request is 28.91 seconds in a single instance application that is running on a single thread. And the request per second that a server could handle is only 35. And if we look at the multi-instance application, then we see that the requests are same, the concurrency level is same, but the total time this time taken to complete the request is only about 9.29 milliseconds. And the total number of requests per second that a server could handle is 108. That is about three times faster. So now let's do some coding and let's see that how we can achieve this result. And after completing the application, we would be again doing the load testing. So the result would be in front of your eyes. So let's go back to VS code and here I've created a new NPM project. And if you look at the package.json file, we have only two dependencies. That is the express framework and the notemon dependency. And we have a single start script here that says notemon app.js. So now let me close this package.json file. And here I'm using one extension called rest client. So this is the extension which I'm going to use to make a request to our server. So if you don't know how to use rest client, you can go and watch my video. That is linked above and it's in the description also. So it is super simple to use. You simply install this extension and you simply create a file called rest.http and here we can define a request like this. Since we are making a get request, so we type in the get keyword here and then the URL to which we want to make a get request. So now let's go to our app.js file. So here I've initialized a very basic express application and it only has an index route here as we can see here. And then inside the index route, I am making some long running task that is going on after sending back a response of OK here. And then we are listening on port 3000. And then we simply have a log statement here. So now if I simply do npm start, then we see that the server is started on localhost port 3000. And if we go to rest.http and if we make a request here, we see that we get back a response that says OK. So now let's close this and let's go to our app.js file. So now here, firstly, to use the cluster module, what we need to do, we need to require the cluster module and we do not need to install any third party package. This is all built inside Node.js. So what we can do, we can simply say const cluster equal to require cluster like this and then const OS equal to require OS. That is the operating system package. And why I'm using this OS package? It is because to get the number of CPUs or the number of cores present inside our processor. So we can say const num CPU equal to OS dot CPUs dot length. It will give us the number of cores present inside our CPU. And now instead of listening to port 3000, what we can do, we can use the cluster module to check whether the process is a master process. If it is a master process, then we simply fork a new worker process and then we'll start listening inside the worker process. And the master process would not be listening for any request, but only the worker processes would be listening on some port. So now, firstly, what we need to do, we need to check if it is a master process. If it is a master process, then we create a new worker process as the number of CPUs present inside our system. So we can do it like this. So if cluster is master. If it is a master process, then we need to do something. Otherwise, we need to do something else. So if it is a master process, then we need to create a new worker process. So for that, we need to create as many workers as the number of CPUs present inside our processor. So we can do it using the for loop here. So for let i equal to zero, i is less than number of CPUs and then i plus plus simply like this. 
And now what we need to do inside this for loop, we simply need to use one method of the cluster module and that is the fork, module, fork method. So we can say cluster.fork to create a new worker process. And basically this cluster.fork uses the child processes.fork method. And if you want to learn more about child processes, then you can watch the video that is linked here at the top. So now coming back here. So whenever we fork here, then it will create a new worker process. So we know that if we are in this else block, then we are sure that it is a worker process because here we are making an if check that is if it is a master process, then we are doing this thing here. Otherwise, we are doing this thing here. So we are sure that we are inside a worker process. And now what the worker will do? Worker will simply listen on this port 3000. So let's copy this line and we can simply paste it here. And the beauty of these workers is this, that they all share the same port. We do not have to create different ports for different workers. And now what more we can log out here? We can simply log out the process PID. So we can simply pass in dollar process dot PID like this, just to make sure that we are getting different PIDs for each of the workers. So now the work is already done or, or, or almost done. So now if we save this application, the application restarted because of node mod and we see here that our server started on these four processes with these PIDs that is 56, 57, 58 and 59. And now if we make a get request here, we see that we are getting back a response. But now let's see that which worker is sending this response back. So let's go to our app.js file and let me minimize this thing here. So here whenever we are sending back a response, let me add the process PID. So to see that which worker is sending back us a response. So we can simply use the dollar thing here that is dollar process dot PID uh, like this. And now we can save our app.js file. The application again restarted and the IDs of the workers this time are these. That is 74757677. So now if we make a request here, we see that we get a response from 75. That is 28075. And if we make again a request, we get back a response from 77. Again 76, again 74 and again 75. So basically this cluster module uses the round robin approach. That is firstly the first request would be handled by 75, the second would be handled by 77, then 76, then 74 and then again by 75. So this is how this cluster module works. So now let's take it one step further. So let's go back to our app.js file and what I want to do after sending back the response, I want to kill this pro process here. That is whichever worker is responding to our request, I want to kill that worker. So what we can do, we can simply use this cluster thing here that is cluster dot worker that is the current worker dot kill. So now let's save this and the application would restart. And now here inside this uh, if block here, we can listen for an event on this cluster here. So we can say cluster dot on exit. That is if any of the worker died. So here we have the worker, then the code and the signal like this. And now here what we can simply make a log statement that is this worker died. So we can simply make a log statement. So console dot log. And here we can use the back text. So we can say worker and here we can log in the ID of the worker and we can simply say died. That is the worker with this process ID has been killed. So we can simply get the workers process ID like this. That is worker dot process dot PID like this. So now let's save this application. The application again restarted on these processes that is with these IDs here. So now let's go to our rest.http and as soon as we make a request, we'll see that one of the workers will die. So let's make a request. So we see that we get a back a response from 108 and that 108 worker has died. So if we know that we started these three, these four workers here and now only three are left because 108 has been killed. So if we again make a request, 106 has been killed. If we again make a request, 107 has been killed and now we are left only with one worker. So if we again make a request, we see that all the four worker processes have been killed. So if we again make a request, we won't be getting back any response because there are no processes left to handle our request. So in this case, what we can do, we can go to our app.js file again and whenever we see that a worker has been killed. What we can do, we can simply fork another worker by doing 
cluster dot four simply like this and now as soon as a worker is killed or it has crashed for any reason then a new instance of that worker would be initialized and we always have our four instances up and running so this is why i was telling you that even if you don't have multi core cpu if you only have a single core cpu then instead of using num cpu here you can provide in a number here that is 2 or 3 and then you will have that many instances of your application running so that your application should have zero downtime so now let's save this application and this time let's see what happens so let's go to our rest client here so let me make a request here we see that 117 died but we forked another worker here that is 120 if we may again make a request we see 115 died but we again forked a new worker with this process id that is 121 and if we keep on making request here our worker will die but a new worker will get initialized and our application would always have four instances so now this is about this thing here so now let me uh, comment this thing out from here that is cluster dot worker dot kill and now let's jump into load testing so here we have the four instances up and running so firstly let's make a load test of this uh, application with four instances so let's go here at this line here and for this what i have done i am using this package here that is load test that is provided by npm so you can simply install it globally that is npm install hyphen g load test it is super simple to use or if you prefer to use apache benchmark that is fine also so here let me make a load test so load test hyphen n that is the number of request would be 1000 and the number and the concurrency level would be 100 by providing an hyphen c and then the url so http localhost port 3000 So now let's press enter and let's see the time taken to complete the request since we are running four instances. So it might take a moment or so. So let's wait and cross our fingers. So we see here that this time the number of requests were thousand, the concurrency level was hundred, and the total time taken is about ten point four nine seconds, and the request per second that are handled is ninety five. So now. let's see the load test of a single instance so let's go here and before doing so we need to change this code back to be used as a single instance so we can comment this thing out from here and we can start our application on a single port here that is on port 3000 so let me save this and now we have a single instance application and now let's go back to our terminal here and let me again make a load test using the same values that is the 1000 request with a concurrency level of 100 so if we press enter here and this time it might take 30 seconds so i'll be simply fast forwarding this so now here we see that again the total number of requests for 1000 concurrency level of 100 the total time taken is 31 seconds about 31 seconds and the request per second is only 32 so the result is in front of your eyes so it depends on you whether you want to use the cluster module or not so i'd leave it to you so guys that is all about this video so if you have liked the video do hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to the channel do subscribe to the channel so thank you bye bye tata take care and have a good day and have a great day